Today we're going to take a look at the Dijkstra's graph challenge presented at TopCoder. Um, now, Dijkstra is uh, Dijkstra's algorithm is an algorithm that uh, is used to find um, let's see uh, shortest distances between points on a uh, matrix, a graph, or a map, or something like that. Um, and the challenge today was to build a uh, class that used Dijkstra's algorithm to find the shortest distance between uh, points or nodes in a graph. Um, so let's go ahead and talk through the uh, algorithm we have here. Now, uh, the accessor that we've built is just a class called graph. Um, and what this does is when it initializes, it initializes um, to a certain number of nodes. Um, now, the, the total nodes isn't necessarily uh, isn't necessary for uh, using Dijkstra's graph. You can have an infinite number of nodes, um, but the specification that we're to be built to uh, says that the max number of nodes is the number being passed in here. Um, so I have set that value to total nodes. Um, so I've initialized uh, instance variables of total nodes, graph, now this is the graph that we're going to be building, nodes, um, these are the nodes that are be being passed into the graph, uh, index in matrix, um, now this is uh, a value being asked for in the spec. Uh, I am going to talk about the index in matrix, um, but for the most part that index uh, is going to be used to assign values in the adjacency matrix. Um, now uh, I also initialize an adjacency matrix and this is just an array of arrays um, so it's array it's an, an array of size total nodes um, and each of those uh, or the, each of those uh, arrays also contains a default value of an array um, of size total nodes um, so basically what this is going to do is it's going to build a matrix that shows me uh, connections between each of the nodes in the graph all right, the first method um, after initialize in my graph class is add node. Now, um, this is where we start. Uh, each graph has to have a series of nodes that can be attached to one another um, in order to build the map or the matrix or whatever we're building um, that this graph is going to be used for. So uh, as per the spec, and let's go ahead and take a look at that real fast because a lot of these methods are built to answer uh, tests in the spec. Okay, so uh, when we add nodes, um, this is going to return nothing um, if at index and matrix is greater than total nodes. So I can't add more nodes than I have in, um, or I can't add more than the total nodes that I have passed into the graph originally. Um, so if I build a graph that is supposed to have three nodes. If I try to add a fourth node or a fifth node or however many nodes after that, um, it won't accept it. However, if total nodes hasn't been reached yet, the node is going to equal a value of name, and that's going to be the name passed in, and an, in <clears throat> an index in the matrix. Now this index in the matrix is, again, just a number of where it's going to go in this adjacency matrix and I initialize that index uh, of the matrix at zero. So the first node we passed in is going to be index zero. Um, the next node we pass in, again, we get an increment on this index, is going to be index two and three and four, or however many uh, nodes we have in the um, graph total um, until we reach the maximum number. Um, but as each of the nodes are created, they are passed into the nodes array um, to be held, 
and uh, then I add uh, them into the adjacency matrix um, at the index in the, um, the matrix at value 0 because um, this 0 being passed in is the weight um, and weight, it, we're going to talk about weight in a minute, but this is the weight it takes um, to get from one point to another or the time, the lag, distance, whatever it takes to get from one point to another um, and to get from one point to the same point that distance, weight, uh, lag, etc. is zero. Um, so wherever we find that node in the matrix, if that node is itself, uh, its distance, weight, etc. will be zero. And then when I add the node, I of course then return the node um, so we know that it's there. Uh, then, um, I'm sorry, we return the node to, in order to use it later. Uh, then, um, the next is uh, a method called uh, node, question mark. Again, this is just checking to see if a node exists in the graph. Um, if it exists in the graph, it returns true. If it doesn't, it returns false. And we are checking for existence by looking for name. Again, each of the nodes passed in is passed in as a string character or a character value. Um, so we are looking for that particular character value in the graph. Uh, the next node is find node. So should a node exist in the graph? Um, we want to be able to withdraw that node later. Um, so we will, again, look at each node in the nodes array. Um, and if node uh, name equals name, then uh, we are going to return the node um, with the name value passed into that method. Um, the next method is used for creating edges in the graph. Now edges are just connections in the graph. Um, so we connect one point to another um, and we give it a weight because that's how long it takes to get from one point to another. And this is a value that's going to be passed into the adjacency matrix um, at the indices between these two nodes. Um, and again, this weight is something that we will be using um, as we get there. Uh, so again, we are passing in a name one and name two and the weight. Uh, now, I don't think that these are necessary. Um, let me actually test that real fast, make sure it doesn't break anything. It did, so we'll add those back in. Um, so basically what's happening here is uh, if, uh, actually, I'm just not using the values. There we go. Values not being used, should not break it. Okay. Um, so. I'm passing in the add edge. Again, this edge is just connections. Um, I pass in a name, so this is that character, a name one, and a name two is the second character, and then the weight. Now again, weight is just distance from one point to the other. Uh, when we pass in the name one and name two, we need to make sure that those nodes exist in the graph. If they don't, we need to add them in to the graph. Um, so essentially, we can add edges into the graph um, immediately without first adding nodes because as soon as we start adding the edge if the node exists we add the edge if the node doesn't exist we add the node and then we add the edge um, so it's a redundant method a little bit um, but it's just in case we have um, or we're passing in a node we haven't created yet uh, then what happens here is that node will be created and then the edge will be made um, so we can have a node in the graph already and then just add nodes or connections to that previous node without having to um, add in another node beforehand. Um, so again, this is a bit of a redundant method, but it's useful in that manner that I can add connections to um, or into the graph without having to add a new node before I add the connection. It will do it for me. Um, so once those nodes are passed in, then I need to actually connect the graph. Um, so I, I, 
I use the connect graph method, um, which we'll talk about in a second, and I'm going to pass the name one, name two, and weight to that connect graph method. Um, once I connect the graph, I have to connect it both ways, uh, name one and name two, and then name two and name one. Um, so I'm connecting, I'm creating a bi-directional connection in that um, map, that graph, um, so that if I go from A to C and the distance is two, I can also go from C to A and the distance will still be two. Um, then I'm going to add an adjacency. Now this just adds um, that weight into the adjacency matrix at the index of node one and node two. And which we'll talk about in a second. Um, now again, uh, the connect graph just it's a method that returns an edge if the edge exists in the edges array. Um, actually, that's not a good comment. Uh, so this just creates a connection between nodes. Um, so again, I'm creating that connection. So I'm checking the graph to see if the source or the node one is passed in. Um, now the source is just where that that connection starts from. So it can start from uh, again. Let's go back to A to C. So if I go from start from A and I go to C and that distance is two or that weight is two, um, then I add that in. Um, but if I'm going from C to A, then the source is C and the target is um, A in that sense. So uh, first I check to see if the key and that's that source node. Um, exists within the graph. Um, if it does not, then I create that source node um, by just passing in graph with key source, and the value that's being passed into that um, hash is going to be uh, target, uh, or is another hash uh, whose key is target and value is weight. If that key does exist in the graph, however, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new uh, value hash um, for that key, that source key, um, and I'm just going to give it the value, that value hash, which is value is going to be weight. Um, and so an example of this would be if I have uh, connection between A and C and that weight is 2 and I want to add another connection to A let's call it D so if I add A to D and that value is 4 then um, A now has two connections to it um, the first one is C2 and the second one is D4 um, which we'll show in a minute uh, then the next method is the adjacent add adjacency now again, this is just to add um, weights uh, into the adjacency matrix um, at the indices for the two nodes that are passed in. So uh, this add adjacency takes in name one, name two. Then I need to find the indexes for name one and name two, the node indexes. So I'm gonna use my find node method um, and pass in name one for I, and then I'm going to return the index in the matrix for that node. And that's going to be my index I. Um, then I'm going to do the same thing for name two, and that index is going to be labeled J. And that way, when I pass um, my values into the adjacency metric, matrix, I can pass it in at adjacency matrix IJ, and that's going to be the weight for um, that particular uh, item in the graph. And adjacency matrix Ji is also going to be the weight for the value passed into the graph. Um, my next method is neighbors with weight. Now this is a method that is being looked for in the spec. Um, and basically it's just taking a look at the uh, adjacency matrix. And if there is a, or if there are values in the adjacency matrix, um, that are not nil or are not zero. If it's zero, it's that node already. Um, so if it's not there, then I need to pass in what index um, or what index those uh, weights are, as well as um, their their weight. Um, and that's going to be passed into neighbors. So each uh, node has a neighbor that has an index. 
um, and await. So if I go back to AC, um, let's say that A is index 0 and C is index 2, um, then if I'm looking for uh, the neighbors of index A or the neighbors of node A, then I need to look in the adjacency matrix for node A, which will be uh, the array adjacency matrix 0. Um, and then I'm going to see if any of those numbers or if any of those indices in that specific array um, have weight. If they have weight, then I, add, then I pass to the neighbors array that I've created up here um, the uh, hash uh, that contains the index in the matrix at i and the weight of that neighbor or that edge, that connection um, to a. So if I'm connecting to c, then the index in matrix is going to be passed as 2 because that's where c is located and the weight from a to c is 2. So again, the weight's going to be passed as well. And again, we'll, we'll see all of this in action as we move through. Um, the next method is the Dijkstra's algorithm itself. Um, now again, Dijkstra is, uh, we can read all about it on the Wikipedia page that's, that I've attached. Um, and it's just a method in which uh, we look for distances from one point to another in a graph and we find the uh, shortest um, distance from that, that starting point to the end point or the source to the target points. Um, so if I have to traverse a graph, I want to make sure that I get there in the shortest possible time. Um, these sort of things are used for like Google Maps and uh, Waze or something like that in which um, I'm looking for the best possible route to get from my starting point to my ending point. Now there could be many, many possible routes and depending on traffic or uh, highways or bridges or road outages or whatever, then I can alter my route or find a better route um, using that algorithm to get from point A to point B. Um, and that's basically what the Dijkstra's algorithm is doing. <clears throat> So uh, this algorithm itself is uh, taking in that source. Now that source is just that name of that node. Um, it's creating a hash called distance and a hash called previous. Um, now what it's going to do with this and what we're going to actually see it do in a minute. Actually, let's go ahead and run just the Dijkstra itself so we can actually uh, get a good look at what's happening here. So remember, uh, this, this method is creating two new hashes, one called distance and one called previous. Um, and then what it's going to do is it's going to check the graph uh, and keys at each. And it's going to basically set initial values for uh, this these hashes. Um, so if we want to take a look at those initial values, then I need to comment out a good portion of this algorithm. Uh, save it and then I will go ahead and run it real fast Okay, and so the distance algorithm or the distance hash I'm setting is um, I initially set each distance to infinity um, and this is because uh, When I start figuring out distances um, and I'm looking for minimum values uh, Each value that is less than infinity will be set for that value um, So it gives me an opportunity to say hey look I haven't, I haven't gotten to this uh, value yet, there's no connection to this value, or the sh there's a shorter possible connection from A to B or A to C or A to D, etc. Um, so that's the first uh, print here, and to make it more specific, I can actually put uh, and we will print this off with the label distance. <clears throat> and so when we do this again, we can see distances. And then the same thing with previous. Uh, 
Okay, one more time. Okay, so we see uh, distance. The distances are initially set at value infinity. The previous is set at value negative one. Now, the previous, um, <coughs> it's set at negative one initially. It doesn't really mean anything. What is going to happen here is that as we start traversing the graph, um, these previous values are going to be set to um, the, the node or the name of the node that we just came from to get from or to get to the next array or next node. Um, so again, we'll see that in a minute when we actually start using uh, Dijkstra's. But I just wanted to give you a view of what's happening with that first part of the algorithm. Okay, so we'll come back and uncomment this. Um, so we can continue on. Now, <clears throat> uh, the distance uh, from, or okay, so the distances are initially set to infinity. Now, the distance at the source, again, we're talking about distance at source, um, from source to source is always going to be zero. So distance at source <clears throat> is going to equal zero. And then uh, we set up a new array called unvisited and these are the nodes we haven't quite reached yet and these are going to be all the keys of the graph so again those names of the nodes that have been created and passed in now until uh, the unvisited array is empty um, we are going to start traversing that unvisited array <clears throat> and start setting the distance equal to um, the weight of the graph. Um, so if I'm going from A to C and I have to traverse B first, um, A to B could be weighted at 1. So A starts initially at 0 and I go to B, which is the weight is 1, so that edge is 1. So from A to B, my weight or distance is 1. Now from B to C, the weight is 2. Um, so if I go from A to C, I have to traverse B, so A to B is 1, B to C is 2, so A to C is 3. And that's basically what's happening here with each of the unvisited nodes. Um, as long as there is a connection between one node and another, um, it's going to traverse that uh, map until it gets to that node. So um, it will get the distances from the starting node to any of the endpoint nodes um, in this uh, <clears throat> in the graph um, and then return each of those. So as it goes through each of the unvisited, um, it uh, calls a minimum value and it's going to say, hey, look, the value um, at this u and u is just an index in the graph for that first letter um, and it's going to set that as a value which will be the weight eventually um, break if distance u equals float infinity so again if distance u uh, gets to to be a float infinity then it's going to break out of this this loop um, however, if it's not, then unvisited, um, we're going to remove that u, um, that's the minus equals here, and um, as it removes the u, then we can continue looping through this uh, unvisited array um, until obviously it's empty. And then graph u keys um, is going to be, sorry, my mouth is a little dry here. Uh, is going to be the values in uh, that adjacency matrix, uh, I'm sorry, in the uh, nodes or the graph, I'm sorry, in the graph uh, key value index um, and, it's, and it's going to pass in those values for that key value index. So basically those values in the key value index in the graph are the connections um, to uh, the key in graph 
So if I wanted to look at that, what, what graph looks like right now um, would be a key, and then uh, its value would be like b, b uh, whose weight is 1, and c whose weight is 2. Oops. All right, so uh, this U here in Dijkstra is like that A, um, and it's going to take a look at each of the keys uh, in that graph A, which would be B and C, and then it's just going to check their weights, and those weights um, are what's at graph U, V. Um, as it builds up, it's going to create a temp value, and that temp value is going to be, um, excuse me, that temp value uh, is going to be what the value was previously, um, so zero and then it's going to add the weight to it, which is uh, graph at uv. <coughs> and then if temp is greater than distance v, then distance v um, equals temp, and previous v equals u. Okay, so that's a lot going on in Dijkstra's uh, algorithm itself. Um, but what we can see here then is that <clears throat> that as each of these is moved uh, from one point to another, the weights are added until we can find the shortest distance um, from point A to point whatever. Um, so go, let's go actually go ahead and take a look at that real fast. <clears throat> so we are going to run Dijkstra's and um, we're going to run Dijkstra's from A and see what happens. So let me clear the screen here. Okay, so um, now we notice that none of these distances say infinity anymore. Um, so the distance from A to A is zero. And uh, the distance from A to B is one. And you'll notice that weight one here. And the distance from A to C is two, again, B our A connects directly to C, so that weight is 2. Now if I go to D, um, I have to traverse B, um, so A to B, because A does not connect directly to D, so A to B is 1, and then B to D is 2, so 1 plus 2 is 3. Then if I want to go to E, I have several paths to E. I have a couple of paths to E. I have A to B, B to D, and D to E, or I have A to C and C to E. Okay, now A to B is 1, B to D is 2, um, so that's 3 total, and then D to E is 2, that's 5 total. Or A to C is 2, and then C to E is 5, so that's 7 total. The shortest path is um, A, B, D, E, um, which equals 5, um, and so that is what's passed into 5. Then, uh, if you take a look here, uh, A uh, doesn't connect to any, or A connects to itself, so what's returned there is negative 1, so no uh, ordeal there. Um, we talked about that earlier, that uh, these negative ones don't really mean anything, um, just that it's a placeholder. Um, B, the previous node from B is A, so uh, A goes to B. The previous node of C is also A, um, so there's not a connection there. Um, the previous node from D is uh, B, um, and then in the shortest paths, uh, the previous node to E is D. Um, again, we're talking about shortest paths here because E is also connected to C, um, but since uh, C to E is 5, and then A to C is 2, which gives us a total of 7, 
that's not the shortest path, so we can actually discount C being the previous node of E. Um, so that's what's happening with the Dijkstra's algorithm. And then uh, we use Dijkstra's algorithm in finding the shortest path. Um, so we to find shortest path, again, that's a method that's being specifically asked for in the spec. Um, we pass in name one and name two. Um, now, when we pass name one into Dijkstra, that's what's being used as the source. And then um, it sets up that, that Dijkstra graph, that Dijkstra map. And then uh, we ask it um, if uh, distance name two uh, is, exists. So if it exists, um, it's going to return the distance. Um, to name two, and again, that's what we're finding down here. So A um, is what's passed in, and then we are looking for E um, specifically, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, so if we're looking for B, we'll get returned one. If we're looking for C, two, D, three, and E, five. <clears throat> if I pass in node F as name two, um, it will not be in the distances array and if that's the case it should then return nil or I'm sorry infinity um, the reason we do this is we are looking for connections and if uh, a is in no way connected to F then uh, what happens then is that that distance is undefined um, and that's how we find the shortest path and that is Dijkstra's graph in a nutshell so um, we've seen it work uh, using the test methods that I have set up here. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look at each of these one more time. Again, this was just an example I was setting up. Uh, so we can create nodes, um, and it will not affect our, uh, our graph in any way. No errors there. Um, but remember I said that we can also build nodes by creating edges. So we can do this either way. We can either have nodes created already or build nodes that, um, that allow us, uh, sorry, we create nodes and then we can build edges using those nodes. Or we can just say, hey, look, we've got some edges. Um, create the nodes for me, put them into the graph, and we will work with it either way. Um, so it's a redundant method, but either way will work. So I'm going ahead and uh, close those out real fast. Now let's take a look at the adjacency matrix. Now we kept talking about adjacency matrices, but let's let's look and see what that really means. <clears throat> okay, so each of these arrays within that larger array is actually a node. Um, and its connections, um, and specifically its weight in those connections. So uh, this index 0 is node A, and node A connects to itself, which is the 0 there, the 0 weight, connects to B, which distance from A to B is 1, and it connects to C, distance from A to C is 2. <clears throat> There's no direct connection between D and E, so those values are nil. Um, Let's roll over to index E, or index 4, which is letter E, or node E. Um, it does not connect directly to A or B, so those values are nil. It does connect to C, and its weight value is 5. It connects to D, weight value is 2, and of course it connects to itself, which is weight value 0. So um, we can see how that can be seen as an adjacency matrix. <coughs> All right, next is we are going to look at the graph, uh, the define uh, neighbors with weight. Now again, neighbors with weight is an asked for value. <clears throat> and this is basically just taking a look at the neighbors and returning an index for the neighbor and the weight for that edge if it's connected. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Um, node 1. Ah, bam. Uh, so here, again, with node 1 passed in, we get an index, um, the connection index to uh, the index in the matrix, which is 1, which happens to be node B. 
not really sure a whole lot of information what's that's coming from this neighbors with weight uh, but again it's just I guess checking to see if that connection exists and <coughs> what the weight would be um, but as you can see the method works and it returns uh, the index uh, in the matrix and the weight of the connection uh, next we've already looked at this but we see Dijkstra in action <clears throat> so again we have values that are passed in um, it shows us each of the connections the shortest connections between those two points what the weight is and the previous connections from those points with the shortest distance and then finally um, we can check the shortest distance and we'll actually show both of this uh, we still have to run Dijkstra actually we don't um, so we're going to look for the shortest distance between um, B and let's go E okay and so it returns 4 now if we look at our connections from B to E um, we'll notice that B connects to D which is 2 and D connects to E which is 2 so 2 and 2 is 4 and that's what's returned now we talked about what would happen if uh, we looked for the shortest path between two nodes uh, without a connection whatsoever. So if I pass in uh, name B and name F, uh, what we're going to get here is then infinity because there is no connection to that. Finally, uh, let's go ahead and, and comment out all of this. Um, actually, let's go ahead and remove it since We'll be submitting this soon um, and actually run the RSpec. So again, that command is bundle exec RSpec and we're looking in the spec folder um, for address, no, not address, for uh, Dijkstra's graph or just the Dijkstra spec. I think I spelled that correctly. Um, and then we, pat we run the test and it checks each of these uh, descriptions. Um, we have seven examples that have been passed in and zero failures, and so everything works. Um, again, I know this is a long video, but uh, if there are any questions, please feel free to ask them in the forum. I will answer them as soon as I possibly can, and thank you.